All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, just to kind of reflect on what we talked about our first segment, we talked about our WWE NXT preview. We also talked about uh, AEW Dynamite um, uh, preview. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next segment. We're talking about our AEW's popularity, just in case Kenny Omega retires. Definitely could be, you know, absolutely pivotal. Could be the last nail in the coffin. But, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Like I said before, remember, guys, to use the tips or donations link at the GSMC uh, podcast.net. Give me your questions. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me what you want to for what. Tell me what you want to talk about. Absolutely. I love, you know, engagement with the audience and stuff like that. So, you know, definitely, you know, definitely, definitely, def- definitely do that. So, you know, we can, you know, talk about it. So let's go ahead and get on into it. So uh, Kenny Omega returned to AEW despite battling uh, a divert uh, cultist, the injury that uh, is divert colia. Cu- cu- Sorry, with this whole medical terms, it's they're kind of hard to pronounce. Uh, so it's divert cola. Uh, Kula, Cola, like it's some kind of a different brand of Coca-Cola. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, it's the, it's tearing that causes uh, marble-sized pouches uh, through the wall, uh, through the colon wall, um, resulting in inflammation, also in some cases infection. So um, Kenny Omega has to undergo surgery tonight, guys. Um, well, I don't know if it's tonight, tonight, but, you know, in the future, in the future, because he has to take care of this. I think I read an article where uh, he went to the doctors and the doctors literally told him that you were like just days away from, you know, dying. That this, you know, if this disease or this uh, condition or this illness goes untreated, it can very much, you know, cause death. It could be very, very fatal. So uh, definitely, you know, concern for Kenny Omega's long term health, long term health. Well, you know, glad he's going out. And he's, you know, going out and he's doing surgery and he's helping himself out. Definitely cool. Definitely cool. So he has a long history of, uh, you know, serious injuries. He has, he's had had knee surgery before. And he's also undergo uh, vertigo. And um, he's been absent since December. Uh, he's been not cleared to wrestle. But um, honestly, like with all this and with the, and with the, you know, the, you know, contemplation of Kenny Omega perhaps hanging up the boots from professional wrestling, most importantly, hanging up the boots away from AEW. What does this, you know, what does this kind of mean for AEW? Like, uh, obviously, AEW. You know, I think I, I don't want to keep saying that they're hanging on by a thread, but you know, it's it's kind of hard. But, um, you know, like I said before, uh, we have the recent departures from AEW, including Andrade El Idolo. We've seen uh, Brian Pillman Jr., Sean Spears, Jade Cargill. We've also seen CM Punk because the whole Jack Perry thing. And even two years ago or two and a half years ago, you guys lost Cody Rhodes. So it's just kind of it's just building up. It's just it's not good right now for AEW with losing these superstars. Of course, you sign talents like Mercedes Monet, Will Ospreay. But like you, you just can't replace the you know the OGs like that. Like you know what I mean. Like Kenny Omega, if he ever left AEW, it would be absolutely devastating. Absolutely devastating. But you know. So um, next, I want to talk about the AEW uh, viewing numbers from 2019 when they started. Uh, so in 2019, their average viewership was 950,000 people during 2020. And you can't really be too skeptical about this because it was during COVID. Uh, it was 780,000 viewers in 2021, perhaps their best year. And although from May 2021 to late June 2021, they averaged 500,000 viewers due to um, airings on the East Coast being at 10 p.m. That's a little, you know, that's a little, that's a little too late. But from July, to October, they averaged at least 1 million viewers per show. So, you know, definitely pretty big. In 2022, you saw their debut to Turner Television and TBS, which they averaged. They went back up to their original 950,000 viewers. In 2023, kind of took a little hit. 890,000 in 2024 we are down to 775,000 viewers of course this this uh, these are just averages and stuff like that not exact numbers so don't like you know don't even be like this guy's full of crap like you know like, these are just guess you know not guesstimations cuz i you know i've obviously done research and stuff like that but this is just like the main gist this is what kind of you know what AEW is kind of doing right now in terms of viewership 
Uh, and it's not bad. It's not bad. And honestly, if they if they compare themselves to their uh, to their other you know competitors, obviously WWE is absolutely out. They're they're hot. They're on fire right now. But um, Impact Wrestling, um, they're averaging I think right now about sixty thousand viewers, which is you know you know it's, I, I grew up watching Impact Wrestling, TNA Impact. And it, to be honest, it kind of does break my heart a little bit. But like what happened to WCW, you had, you know, bad managing, bad creative. You had old superstars. You put the, you know, you put the the reins inside of the superstars. Is uh, You put the responsibilities of the general manager within the superstars. And it's just bad. And you've obviously, like, if you're a sports fan, you kind of see with LeBron James when he made it to the Lakers and he would just bring people after people after people. He brought in Russell Westbrook. He brought in Carmelo Anthony. He brought in Roger, like, Roger and Rondo. And it's just like, dude, like, just be the player. Be the person. Be all you can be on the court. Don't really focus on bringing your buddies in. Don't think that you know, like, absolutely more than, you know, coaches do because you see LeBron James barking at his coaches absolutely constantly, all the time, all the time. But, you know, there's a good balance of, you know, between that. Because on the other spectrum of it, you could have a highly, you know, egotistical coach or GM, kind of like Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, who won't even listen to their players and stuff like that. Ultimately, that's the reason why Tom Brady left was because he didn't really feel respected and he didn't really you know, felt hurt. Although Jimmy Garoppolo was let go ultimately because Tom Brady felt not threatened because he's the GOAT, but, you know, kind of like, hey, why are you drafting my replacement for? I got like a like 10 more years of this stuff but there's an even keel there's a amount of respect that you need to give toward your superiors and as a superior there's an amount of respect you can give toward the people working under you so life is about respect people life is about respect respect is given when respect is shown that was something i was always taught so yeah we saw kenny omega have had an amazing match against mjf for the title and it strangely was not on pay-per-view although it was a great title match um a lot of people kind of speculated that this could also be another problem for aew is that they don't really know how to book why put a match of this caliber on a live tv show like okay yeah it's cool Everybody could watch it. It's on cable television. As a wrestling fan, you're like, yeah, but on the business side, you're kind of like, you should have put down on pay-per-view. Would have got some viewers and some money. But ultimately, didn't really work out like that. So, you know, definitely something they could have picked up on that the most. Like I said before, most wrestling fans, they keep really in touch in weekly shows. But they honestly love to tune into their pay-per-views the most. Uh, so, you know, uh, this was obvious speculation that it was a main event. It was a pay-per-view worthy match. Didn't really go out. So bad bookings. Also, uh, you also have to think about the disappearance of cable. Right now, cable TV is at its all-time low. Yeah, people going to, you know, YouTube or going toward other streaming services for uh, for news, documentaries, movies, TV shows, sports, uh, for example. Um, you have to think that about, uh, we also had about 500 million people abandoning cable TV every single year since 2000 and, uh, since 2000, I think 17 was when Netflix was really, no, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but you know, definitely crazy. Definitely, you know, definitely something that acts at, you know, definitely played into the whole reason why AEW is definitely kind of like at, at it's like last fringe, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, Netflix, WWE's new destination, uh, Sling TV, etc., has replaced cable. Why? You know, it's obvious. No commercials, on demand whenever you want. Create a playlist. It just the the app caters to you. It's honestly, it's come to the point where, at first, I loved cable. I didn't want to get rid of it, and my wife was like, like, why do we even have cable? Let's just get YouTube TV. Uh, I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. But I live on the West Coast. Lost Valley Sports Southwest to watch my Angels games. Guess what's not on YouTube TV? Valley, Valley Sports. Like So, like, I can't watch any baseball games. Like, of course, like, you can see some on, uh, you know, ESPN. But it's not the Angels. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so... Definitely something that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I know I'm just like, I seem like just an obsessed Angels fan. And they're like, hey, the Angels, who cares? I care. Nice. <laughs> but um, uh, definitely something that Netflix is doing right now. Like I said, WWE's new destination. Had, and Netflix has subscribers in the t hundreds of millions worldwide. And over, t and over 12 billion hours of content streamed each year. Crazy. 
definitely crazy. Once again, you got to tip your hat to WWE for reaching out to this conglomerate, creating a partnership and having them air Monday Night Raw episodes because it's it's a, it's definitely going to be huge. Absolutely, 110%. It's going to be huge on Netflix. I think WWE is just going to get more and more popular. But uh, so AEW is not too far behind. Something smart that they really did was that they were uh, they have a streaming partner, a streaming services partner in the Wix. Uh, formerly known as HBO Max, Warner Brothers Discovery uh, will be taking, um, you know, AEW shows and perhaps AEW pay-per-views. So, yeah, honestly, throughout, I guess, advertisements for HBO Max and Warner Brothers Discovery, they're going to show, uh, you know, ads to subscribe to, not subscribe to, but just, you know, try to promote the AEW product in itself. You saw the WBD, the Warner Brothers Discovery, CEO David uh, Zasloff, who's very happy with the product. He loves AEW. He thinks, uh, you know, on TNT, on TBS, they have great shows. So, honestly, I just think it's, um, you know, perfect thing for AEW kind of to do that. You saw WWE do it with the WWE Network first. When the WWE Network first came out, I got to be honest, I was a little, you know, I was a little cynical about it. But the fact that you don't have to separately pay for pay-per-views, which they charge an arm and a leg for, is actually, you know, pretty damn, pretty damn smart. Pretty damn smart because ultimately you have all these subscribers coming in. You're giving them good content. They're going to keep coming back and back and back. So, which I feel like the AEWs, you know, this is definitely something that's kind of like an ace in their pocket, kind of like an ace in the hole. This is definitely, like I said, if they put the pay per views on HBO Max, kind of like the way Peacock does for WWE, it's just only going to make AEW a lot better, more successful, and kind of keep them in this fight of professional wrestling. So, yeah, definitely hoping the best to see what happens in terms of AEW. I'm a huge AEW fan, and I know people are like, dude, what are you talking about? You crap on them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, like, I do it like, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, like when you're a parent, and you obviously, you you know, you tell your kids or like if you're a boss, you, you know, talk to your employees that you respect the most, that you want to see them do better because you want them to succeed, man. I don't want you seeing go. I don't want to see you going anywhere. And then, you know, they're like, why is it bitch? You know, why is it bitch? like, cra you know, crapping on me that, you know, I'm the hardest worker here. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, all out of respect, just all out of love. I love, you know, I get too crazy because I care. So, yeah. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. Uh, tonight, we have another edition of Hot Seat Cool Beans. This one's going to be about the WWE NXT World, um, you know, North American Champion. So, obviously, I'm going to say Hot Seat for people, for the superstars that are under the most... Um, you know, the, under the most pressure to win this championship to kind of propel their careers. And I'm going to say cool beans to some that, you know, if they win, cool. If they don't, you know, you're kind of right where you have to be. You probably will get a chance at this title along the line because they're going to be as soon as this champion is crowned, they're going to be looking for competitors. So, you know, definitely something to kind of hold back on. Maybe someone finds themselves in the NXT Women's World Championship title bout heading more toward, uh, you know, uh, all the other pay-per-views that are going to happen during the summer. So, hey, stay tuned.